Hello, welcome back to Bounty and Soul's Plant Powered Kitchen. My name is Lyric. I'm here today to talk about lots of different greens that we have going out at our market today, Friday. It is that time of year where we live where greens are just abounding everywhere. We have a lot of different varieties of greens that we can grow here that don't like when it gets really hot. So as we transition into summer, now's the time to fully harvest those crops and get them out onto people's plates. I'm gonna talk about each different type of green, where it came from, some nutrition information, and I'll share some recipe ideas and then I'll show you some meals that I've cooked with these greens. The first type of green that I have to share with you is some beautiful chard. You can see these amazing rainbow colored stems and then it has big um, uh, tender leaves. The chard isn't very, isn't very tough. Um, so chard is originally believed to be native to the Mediterranean region of Europe. It was cultivated um, as a greens plant from what was once a wild beet. So botanically, beets and chard are actually the same species of plant, but one of them, the beet, has been cultivated or bred for a long, 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 long time to have a big juicy root, whereas the greens variety, the chard, has been bred over a long time to have delicious tender greens. We have chard going out at market today from Dr. John D. Wilson Community Garden, Root Cause Farm, and my garden, our day market garden. Chard is really high in vitamin A and magnesium. You can eat it raw or cooked. Um, like I said, it's very tender, so it's great to eat raw. And the stems um, are very tender as well. So a lot of folks ask if you have to de-stem or remove the stems from your greens. With some greens, you may want to do that. We'll maybe look at another green um, that you might want to do that with. But with chard, you can just leave the stems right in there. Um, they have a nice, like, succulent juiciness to them, especially when they're cooked. The next green I have is some tatsoi. This is um, a label that we created for this tatsoi that's going out at market. So I'll go ahead and unbundle this so you can see. Um, these were harvested as heads. Um, so this is actually the entire plant right here. This is from Lee's One Fortune Farm. Um, they specialize in growing a lot of different Asian greens uh, for us here in the mountains, which is wonderful. Tatsoi is native to China. It has vitamin C, folate, vitamin A, and you can, again, eat it cooked or raw. That's the great thing about a lot of these greens is they're so versatile. Uh, this is another tender one with very juicy stems. Um, I love to add this to like a soup, like an Asian soup. You can even just add it just as this entire plant um, and it will soak up a lot of the flavor. You could also chop it up and add it to soups or stir fries, rice dishes, these types of things. I have some beautiful curly kale. We have kale going out from Fairview Road Resilience Garden and Beacon Village Farms uh, today, which is really exciting. We just purchased a ton of local greens, local organic greens from Beacon Village. So we're really excited to share these with y'all. Kale is also believed to have originated in the Mediterranean region, and people believe it's been cultivated by humans for food for over 4,000 years. Kale provides a lot of vitamin A, vitamin B6, and protein. And I was speaking earlier when I was talking about chard, about uh, it not being necessary to remove the stems, but when you have kale, especially curly kale, you have this really fibrous and thick stem that runs all the way along the leaf. And depending on the type of dish that you're making, you may want to remove the kale stem. So for me, if I make kale chips or kale salad, and there's videos for both of those on the website and the Facebook, if I were to make either of those dishes where I'm going for like either a really tender texture or a really crispy texture, the stem is not going to blend well with either of those. It can also carry a lot of the bitterness that some people associate with kale. So if you remove the stem and all you have to do is, is hold, hold it by the stem and squeeze all the way down, bam, there's my stem and here's my greens. If you remove the stem, 
you could be removing a lot of that bitterness and that toughness. We also have a beautiful Napa cabbage. This is from Dr. John Wilson Community Garden. Napa cabbage is also native to China, like the Patsoi, and it is traditionally used in a lot of fermented dishes like kraut and kimchi. I believe it's best as a cooked green, um, so you can actually just leave it as it is in this head and just chop all along the way. The stems are totally edible. I find them really delicious. You can chop it all the way down to the base and then you can compost the base and add this to a stir fry, a stew, a noodle dish, a rice dish. You could even uh, saute with onion and garlic and have it as a side, a green side to um, something else that you're eating. Napa cabbage is high in zinc and it also has a lot of fiber to help with your digestion. Next I have some lamb's quarters. These are um, the tops of the lamb's quarters that I just pulled from my garden. And then here is an individual leaf. Lamb's quarters gets, grows really, really big. Um, I've, it'll, it'll get really, really tall, um, in my garden at least. It's believed to be native to what is now uh, North America, though there's a little bit of speculation there. Uh, but the greens and the stems and actually the seeds are all edible. Um, it's believed that Native Americans would grind the seeds into a flower and we can use the leaves and the stems as a cooked green, um, much like spinach. You can also eat it raw. I personally prefer it cooked. Um, there on the back side of the younger leaves, there's some kind of graininess or mealiness and that really cooks out um, after you cook the greens. So that's why I prefer to cook it. Lamb's quarter is really high in vitamin A, vitamin C, and calcium. It does grow wild. Uh, there's wild varieties all over where we live. It pops up in my garden all the time. And there's also cultivated varieties. We have lamb's quarter going out from Dr. John Wilson and Root Cause Farm today. I have more local greens. I have some beautiful purslane. This came from Lee's One Fortune Farm, much like the Tatsoi. Much like the lamb's quarter, purslane is considered a weed. It is not native um, to where we live. It was introduced, um, but it grows just about everywhere and it does spread really rapidly. Um, you can identify it. It has really succulent leaves. If you've ever seen like a jade plant, it almost looks like a young jade plant. Um, and these leaves are so juicy and tender and they have like a lemony, citrusy quality to them. So you can even just begin imagining how that flavor and that texture would work in some recipes. You can chop purslane, add a little lemon juice or honey, a little salt, and use that as a topping um, in sandwiches or on, on rice dishes or curry dishes or things like that. Uh, you can also eat it as a cooked green. So again, raw or cooked. The stems are totally edible. Some of the bigger stems, um, they might be, they might be a little more difficult to cook down. Um, they they do get um, quite juicy. So depending on the type of dish that you're making, it may or may not fit. But purslane is one of the few plant-based sources we have of omega threes. Purslane is also known to help promote restful sleep. So it may be great to eat some purslane in the evening. Um, a few hours before you go to bed. Lastly, I'd like to share about my friend Dandelion Greens. We have Dandelion Greens going out at market today from Beacon Village Farm. Um, dandelion, of course you may be familiar, um, growing out wild in your yard. Um, it has the bright yellow flowers in the spring and then the big puffball seed clusters uh, that folks like to make wishes on. Um, but it also has these really delicious edible, highly nutritious leaves. So the dandelion greens that came from Beacon Village, they're a cultivated variety. Um, so people have clued into how, to all of the benefits of dandelion greens and there are cultivated dandelions um, that get much bigger than this. This came just wild from my yard, but the wild varieties are also highly nutritious. Um, you can harvest them anytime you see them. Uh, you just want to be aware of where you're harvesting from. So if you're harvesting from someone's lawn or a public space, you want to be making sure that people are not spraying um, herbicides or lawn care treatments or things like that um, in the space that you're harvesting um, because the dandelion will 
have that um, on its surface and it will also absorb it into the leaf and you don't necessarily want to be eating that. But you do want to eat dandelions because they are really high in a lot of vitamins and minerals, specifically vitamin K, vitamin E, and potassium. And another really interesting and unique quality about dandelion greens is that they're really bitter. And bitters, bitter vegetables, bitter foods, bitter herbs, really help with our digestive process. But you might be thinking like, whoa, if it's really bitter, I don't know that I want to eat it. Um, it is bitter. If you were to eat this raw, it it would be very bitter. Um, most folks would not be accustomed um, to eating dandelion greens raw. But as a cooked vegetable, um, it really cooks off some of that bitterness. And if you blanch your dandelion leaves before cooking them, it can really um, cook out that bitter quality that you may not be excited about. Blanching just means you get a pot of boiling water you dunk the dandelion greens in, you let them cook for about 30 seconds, and then you strain them out of the boiling water and put them directly into an ice bath. So that's all the greens I wanna share with you today. I'm gonna to go make a couple recipes in the kitchen and I'll come back and show you what I've created. We'll also have all of the written recipes in the description of this video and likely more on our website. Um, if you go to the recipes page, we have recipes for almost every food we give out at market. Here's some of the dishes I made with my local greens. We have um, some purslane tossed in lemon juice with salt and olive oil. We have a massaged kale salad with balsamic vinegar and fresh edible flowers. And we have sauteed chard with onion and local carrots. You can find recipes for all of these greens on our website. Hope this video was helpful.